<laughs> this should be a short video. People keep asking me, how am I doing my testing? All right. So, uh, and go. And I've, I've answered this a million times. I'm going to answer it again. So there's the program down there. We're going to get to them. So I, there's this program I have. And I split the pain. First of all, I split my pain in half with Tmux. I don't ever use Vim, Vim pains. It's a waste of time. And, and, then, and then I do this. So you go ENTR test. And what this does is it uses the ENTR program, which detects, we'll get into it, but it, it detects when something changes. And if something changes in the list of files that you pass to it, then it runs whatever it is you tell it to run, right? And we'll, we'll break it down for you in a second, but let me show you what it does. So like if I change this here and I change, I wanted to, to change this, my test case, right? I just save it, sees that the file changes, reruns the test, and I can zoom in on the test and see that it changed. And I can go back and change it again. And I just save it and it just reruns the test. There's no keystrokes involved. It just does the test and shows me. I mean, it, there's so many different ways to test go. This is, I mean, there's a lot of things that people do. I find that the use of ENTR to be magical and wonderful because you can use it for anything. Maybe, maybe you don't, you want to run, run the test case. Maybe you want to run it just for this one thing, this one specific test case. Maybe you wanted to compile the code in a different way and do a thing. Uh, there, you can do anything with the ENTR command. So if you don't know about the ENTR command, you should go learn about it. Uh, and you know, to do that, you just do man ENTR, uh, and run arbitrary commands when the file changes. So let me give you an example of how, this isn't about ENTR, it's specifically about Go, uh, how I'm using ENTR for Go. So let's, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this command here. So the, I'm going to use Unix filters to do this in Vim, because I wanted to show you that as well. So it's like, I'm about, I want to put the code here for the source code for this. So let's do that. So I don't know where it is. So let's do that. So let's say which... Uh, go ENTR uh, test, right? And I'm going to do bang, bang, two exclamation points, and then uh, bash. And the bash is going to run that line and replace it with its output. All right, or it should anyway. Gosh dang it. Which go ENTR test? Did I do it? Oh, it's, is it go ENTR test? Maybe I had the name wrong. Uh, bang, bang, bash. There. Okay, so then that, that makes it into the file, right? Well, we actually want the content of the file. So let's put cat there. Now, how can I replace that with its output? Same thing. Bang, bang, two exclamation points, bash. Send it to bash, and I get the output of that command. That is why I don't use plugins and NeoVim. Because I can just use any script that I could ever write, any command I could ever write on the command line. I can do that. I don't need it. The only thing I need plugins for is syntax. So that's a separate video. Uh, you can go read about that. You can go watch that as a uh, uh, VI Magic video. You can go watch how to do that and learn all about filters or watch the boost or whatever. But here is the ENTR program. This is one of the few cases where I use it using ENV, which is a security vulnerability, but it's fine in this case because I want to be able to run it anywhere on my Mac, and on in this case on a Mac or Windows uh, VM or whatever, and I'll be able to go do that. Uh, uh, so, so thank you for that, Klondike. Um, so here's the command. Okay. Now the first thing you might notice is, so let's, first of all, let's look at the end here. So this is another reason you should use bash and not POSIX and not Z shell. Uh, so this right here is a bashism. Z shell, I think supports it. But what this says is take the output of this command, right? Turn it into as if it were in a file and then redirect that into this as standard input. So this takes find and find says, give me every single file from here down, everything down, find dot, it says, give me every single file from here down and send those all into here, into ENTR, right? So when ENTR runs, it then keeps track of all of those files. And if any of those files change at all, if their last modified time changes, it does this command, right? Now, normally you could have just put go test here, right? But in my case, I wanted to make it so it could the screen. And so I, I want a kind of a multi-level command thing. And for that, the secret is to do bash dash C, which sends this entire little miniature program uh, as your single program. So ENTR does a syscall, uh, an exec syscall, which means that it only gets one binary. You can't have it run multiple, you can't send it a whole shell script, right? So this is how you send it a shell script by sending it one binary and then giving it the arguments for the shell code to write. So that is what it's doing. And that runs every time anything changes, whether I, whether I rewrite the main code or I rewrite the example code, anything in that, in that directory that changes, I can even just touch a file in there. If I've changed something, it's not watching like in my test data directory. Um, and it, and it'll go ahead and it'll rerun it and I'll see whether I passed or not. Now, sometimes I have to go in here and I have to trick it. And this is something, I don't know if you notice this, but you see here, what is this about? Anybody know? Anybody know we have anybody in the stream right now who knows what that's about? Why the hell would I put this here? 
I put that there because, and I did not quote it on purpose, because what I wanted to do is I wanted to I wanted to expand all the arguments. So let me tell you why. So so like let's say um, let's say that I'm like doing going here and it's like blowing the heck up because I I killed a million things right and there's way too many things broken at the time. So let, let me go ahead and break something again. So let me go. I'll break this one right. So we're gonna break this one and and so we broke that one right. We didn't break them all right. Uh, but 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 I might I might I might break them. Let me let me let me try to break them all. Should we break them all? Let's let's break the things. Let's go break everything. Yeah, we're gonna break it all right now. We are. We're gonna break it right now. Watch. All this stuff's gonna break. Okay. So now, over here. Oops. Only the one thing broke. Damn it. We need to break more things. <laughs> I see. I I gotta find more stuff to break. Anyway. So the the point I'm trying to make is that that is that you know. You can break any number of things. You need to put too much stuff down there because I am splitting the screen, right? Sometimes I'll have it on a, another screen. I'll, bam, I'll bounce back and forth between the screens. It depends on how big of a thing it is that I'm working on and how much screen real estate I want to use. Sometimes I'll have it. I'll have this entire thing running on a different window, and then I'll bounce back and forth, right? And go check it out, and then and then it's like super easy to do that. It's just you know Control A, whatever. Um, and and so, but 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 what I was trying to get at was. Um, was 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 how if you to pass arguments right that's the thing so let's break it again so let's let's pretend like this was like three things that were that were a thing and i like hmm i need to isolate it to pretty well go test takes the argument run and it takes a regex right so i could just put pretty here and then that would make sure that only the pretty test ran instead of the panic from the other thing that went ballistic and then it would i would i can isolate the test down to that really that single one and i can just go restart it if i want uh, sometimes I forget to, that I, that I'm, that I'm qualifying and I think my whole thing is passed and I'm like, oh, I have all these other problems because I, because I, I forgot to remove my run, uh, isolator kind of thing. So, so, uh, and we're not using dollar at, no, we don't want dollar at in that particular case. We want, in this case, we actually want it as is if it were to be double quoted. I, I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe we should try it. Should we try it? Let's see what happens if we do it that way. I mean, I, I mean, you can try it. I don't care. I mean, this, this case, I don't care because it's already been quoted. Right. So, I mean, that might, that might be a problem that, I mean, normally you would not do that though. Right. Normally you would use a uh, dollar at sign and you would put double quotes around it. Normally. Uh, does it quote the screen? Yeah. This, this, this is already quoted. So this, this thing is already quoted and it's coming from me. Right. So, uh, so that's why I have it there. That's, that's a kind of a longer version than I would like to have to explain what's going on when I'm doing testing, but that, that is exactly what's happening. All right.